Hi. How'd it go? <gasps> they did what? You did? I can't take any credit for that. I'm just so proud of you. You know, this is what life looks like when you're tapped into your authenticity and equally aligned with your intuition. Remember, mom always taught us to trust our guts. You're listening to Hey Big Sister with me, Meg. There's a different way to run your life and your business. One that allows you to truly connect with people on a human level. No more icky sales, no more comparisonitis, just you taking mindful, intentional, messy action to create success that you can be proud of. Let this episode be your guide. For the next few minutes, open your mind to new possibilities. And don't forget to pour me a little grease. I'm just like you, except I picked up the mic and started talking about all the things that go on in both of our heads. If this episode hits home for you, it would mean the world to me to have you leave the podcast a five-star rating and written review. Also, could you do me a favor and text the link to this episode onto three of your best friends? You know, I'm a real human behind this mic, and I actually want to connect with you. Click the show notes below to connect with me on social media. I would love if you sent me a DM with your takeaway from this episode. You are family now. Here we go. Hello, and welcome back to Hey Big Sister with me, Meg. Um, We're already on episode nine. I can't believe this. I've been doing more batch creating than I had anticipated. Um, Just getting my, you know, ADH brain used to a schedule um, and creating content before it actually comes out is something that's been quite a, not a challenge, like in a bad way. It's been actually a really good challenge, but um, I just can't believe I'm already on nine. So today we are going to talk about how to create authentic marketing and sales. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update of where I'm at in this podcasting process and business. And um, I have a little special guest here today that wants to say hello. So introducing my first guest, Miss KK O'Neill. Hello. I am, I am mommy's daughter, and um, I have no idea what this podcast is about or anything, and I do not know why my mom is doing it, and I do not know who um, um, made her do it or anything. <laughs> well, how about one day we do an interview together? How does that sound? Good? Yeah. All right. Tell the people you'll see them soon. See you soon. So since we are recording this a few weeks ahead of time, my kids are still home and they will be going back to school in about a week and a half. And I wanted to include her today to kind of just to showcase to people that might not know me that well, that this is how I work, right? I have three young kids who are around a lot of the time. And I like to show other women how to grow their business and their social media presence along with living their life. And that was always my dream and goal. Like I didn't want things super separated. Might it be easier at times? Yes. Might it be harder? Yes. But um, this is just the way my husband and I wanted to grow our careers and businesses. And I know that there's other people out there too. So I am actually really excited about the upcoming school year because it is going to give me more of that quiet, creative time where I do feel way more clear and um, productive in my you know, career space. Um, but we have had a really, really great summer and they have got to see me grow this you know, right in front of their eyes the whole entire time. So that is something that is pretty cool. Um, so like I said, today we are going to talk about authentic, intuitive marketing and sales. And for me, that is something that is become a, you know, a cornerstone in my business. When I started this business, I knew that I would never do anything that didn't feel like really good and aligned with my morals, my ethics, my, or just like, didn't feel right to my style. And in the coaching industry in the entrepreneurship, you know, 
space, there is a lot of people out there that will tell you how to market and how to sell your products. And they will give you very prescriptive, even, you know, scientifically based strategies. And these, these, the, the strategies are based off of, you know, human psychology and how to get people to make decisions and how to get people to buy. And that is something that I believe is not my responsibility. My responsibility is not to get or convince people to buy. I look at marketing and sales in a very different way. My responsibility in my business is to inform people, to tell people about what I have in which that they could buy that might help them on their path in, in business or at times it was, you know, personal development, um, energy work, things like that. I never saw my job as a way to convince people. And I am not saying this with any judgment. I think that people are on a path for a reason and they choose a way to do sales and marketing because that is what's aligned with them at the time. So we see a lot of people bashing how some people sell and criticizing and I'm not real I'm not here to do that. I think that there is ways that we can all learn to get better and wh- what I think is at the core of it is like how to human better, right? Like it's marketing is all about human relationship. You could have the best graphics in the world. You could have the best copy in the world. But ultimately, what you're trying to do is create connection, create a relationship with that human that is you're either calling into your offer or you're trying, you know, maybe that maybe it's even a physical product that you want them to have. Something I embodied really early on was I took away... I kind of eliminated the expectation of like, who was going to buy my things? And I think that happened for two different reasons. I didn't ever take seriously the client avatar. Like that was something that I would hear people talk about early in the, in my, in my coaching journey, um, get really clear on your client avatar, know who you're selling to know what they like, know where they shop, know what they, and I just completely blew that off. I was like, I would try doing exercises around that. And I'm like, I am going to release this. I am going to release an attachment to who I think is going to buy my things. Now I don't, I, I can look back and look at all of my clients and look at all the people that have purchased and see common denominators. Most of them are female. A lot of them are in the entrepreneurial space. Many of them are in, you know, their thirties or forties. But other than that, there's a vast array of experiences. I have, you know, in the beginning, a lot of people told me that I should just focus on moms. I always felt a very strong gut feeling that that's, I did not want to do that. I want, I was very open to working with anybody wherever they were in life. And I ended up having a lot of clients in their twenties with no children. And I loved that. I loved, and that's where I kind of was really, you know, really able to see that there, I have this very strong, like big sister quality. Um, and I loved it. I loved, I love, I love working with people at that stage of life. And it felt very constricting to pick out this like one type of person. And that exercise, if, if client avatars work for you, then that's great. Um, but this conversation is just to show you that you don't have to do it the way that everyone else is telling you. So a huge part of how I conduct my marketing and sales is through energy. Um, it's funny. I'm just realizing that I haven't done like a real good explanation of who I am here on the podcast. And that episode is coming. That will probably be episode 10, my journey and my background. Um, but along with having a, you know, a long time in managing social media and doing marketing for companies, I also am a trained energy worker, intuitive. I still take, you know, I'm still constantly being mentored in that area and I don't 
do any kind of readings or anything for the public, but it is something that is incorporated in my, especially my one-on-one work with my clients. But it is something that I teach in my marketing and sales. So by the time this comes out, um, the, what I'm calling it right now, the intuitive business method is probably going to be, hopefully the doors will be opening and hopefully you'll be able to (laughs) click on a link in here. And if not, um, you can always just DM me questions, but in this methodology, you are going to be learning all about how to use energy in your marketing and sales. So I have this kind of theory that I've been working out in my head that teaching marketing and sales can be very prescriptive. People show up to a lot of mentors and they want the answers right away. They want somebody to hand them a PDF or a workbook that says, follow this step, this step, and this step, and you're going to get clients. That is possible. That happens for people. To me, that doesn't feel authentic and it doesn't have longevity. Um, it doesn't build sustainable relationships with clients. Those are the people that kind of do what, from what I see, and this is, you know, nothing is an absolute. There's always going to be the, you know, the, the, the people that this works for and they build an entire career and empire on it. And that's great, but that's never something that has felt good to me. And in a lot of my one-on-one work, I can, my clients have all the information. They know how to market their product. They know how to do sales. They know they have been taught before how to get on a sales phone call and how to close people on the call. And, but that doesn't feel good to them, right? They hear, they hear that, or they hear somebody say, you know, follow up in the DMS and do this and do that. And they're like, Oh, okay, I can do that, but it doesn't feel good. So if you are trying to do something because somebody told you to, and it doesn't feel good in your body, the person on the other end is going to feel that energy. If you feel unsure about trying to convince somebody, quote unquote, convince somebody to work through money blocks, but you have on the other side, you're thinking to yourself, well, this, this might not actually be a block. This might be true financial hardship. And here I am trying, you know, there are people that do teach people different kind of predat- what I see as predatory methods of getting them to take out their credit card on the phone or convince them that they don't have to speak to their partner. And that is something that I just feel really, really strongly that you do not have to do, especially, I actually think that you probably shouldn't do things like that. If you have any bit of like trauma awareness in your, in your tool belt or understanding, um, you can probably deduct like how that could really, really activate people's nervous systems and how that could make them feel really unsure of themselves. So my goal is always to make the sales process feel really, really empowering because here is the thing. I trust my clients. I trust that they know themselves best. I trust that they know their finances best. And I trust that their intuition is going to guide them to exactly the right person, exactly the right um, container, exactly the right course that they need at the time. Am I here to guide them? Am I here to educate them? Yes. Am I here to even have, you know, hold space for the hard conversations around finances? Yes. But I'm never going to push or convince people that something is the right fit for them. Because ultimately, again, my take on it is that they know what is best. And here is the thing. You will hear people say that you have to use some psychology in marketing and sales. You have to have sales conversations, in, uh, you know, over the phone, or you have to do things a certain way. And it's just not true. And the reason why I know it's not true is because I don't do those things, and I still make sales, and I still have fine grown my business. And I I have found other mentors that do the same. Like I rarely do sales calls. calls. I only do sales calls if somebody wants to get on the phone and ask me questions. Um, Most of the time people just purchase through my Instagram DMs. I have sold programs where I don't even have, I don't have a webpage for them. And people follow along in my stories 
they follow along on Facebook in the past and they know whether or not they desire that offer. And if they have questions about it, they will ask me, um, anything under 10 people. Like, so if I'm going to do a program that's going to be under 10 people, I don't create a sales page for, um, that's a really intimate and close container. I want to be chatting with those people. I want to be, um, I don't have an application process right now per se, but because I can feel energy. I know if people are going to be a good fit or not. So if this is, if you're listening to this and you're like, yes, like I can feel energy too. I know here's an example of it. Like if I am purchasing, I have purchased big programs before masterminds, one-on-one coaching that are, you know, multiple five figures. Never did I do that because I was convinced by the sales page. I don't even think there was a sales page for one of like the $14,000 investments that I made. And that is just the way that I work. I know energetically whether or not I'm going to be a good fit. The program is going to be a good fit. And if there are things along the way that I miss, like I just, I joined something recently and I was like, oh, I didn't even realize it didn't have this. Was that probably on the sales page? Yes. But I take full responsibility. I show up and say, okay, I made this investment. I trust my gut. I trust the energy that I feel. I made this investment and okay, it doesn't have this piece that I thought it might, but I, I trust that this is like exactly what I need. Um, I don't need any more. I don't need, we often like think that we need all of this extra knowledge and support and that's not off. That's not always the case. It's, it's leaning into the trust that this is exactly the right program that I'm supposed to be in at this moment. So I, I take that responsibility and I take that seriously. And I, I've never had the experience where I've entered a container or a program and left saying like, Oh, that was awful. That was like, I didn't get what I asked for. Um, so that has come with time because I really, really trust my decision-making skills because they're so informed by my intuition. So I know because I am a buyer like that, then there's other buyers out there like me. And I use this to really inform my marketing and sales. So just as the, like just before I go and buy a program, I would do something like slow down maybe one hand on my heart, one on my belly, breathing and really tuning into, is this what I need? Am I making this choice from an empowered place or am I giving my power away? And I make the decision from there. Does this, is this something that excites me? Does it light me up? So now work backwards from there. If that's how I make the buying decision, I use all of that to inform how I set up my marketing. When I am selling a program, I really let the program and what, how it's going to look flow through me intuitively. On one hand, that can get really frustrating because you have to wait for those intuitive downloads and they don't come when we want them to all the time. But I, again, lean into trust that it's going to show up exactly when it needs to. And when I am in that messy middle of waiting, I put different practices in place that help me feel more grounded in that unsteady time that help me feel more creative and more connected so that hopefully it will flow soon, flow um, through me more quickly. Um, But I've learned to hold myself through that. And once the program does flow through, I usually then like the more like practical side of it is I will open up a either note on my phone in my notepad, or I'll open up something in Google docs and I'll just start typing what's coming through, like what it's going to look like. I will put sections in there. Who is this for? Um, what, where are they on their journey? What are they, what's going to really excite them? What do they need to hear right now? I'll write different things like that. I'll let the inspired, you know, um, intuitive messages come through. Then I will take that to Instagram. So 
you know, this is going to be taught in my method. There's more of a launch strategy that you can put in place. And we could talk about that on a, another um, podcast, but for the most part, it looks like I know something's coming and then I will kind of start to build excitement about that on Instagram. So either I'll, you know, do a story with a solid background and some words just saying like something big is coming or, you know, just building that excitement because I feel so excited about it. If I let that gen- genuinely come through, my people also feel really excited about it. And then I will do some more, you know, structure on the back end. I'll sit and think of um, the pictures that I want to use or the branding or whatever it might be. And sometimes, depending on the size of the program, I will put structure in the calendar. I'll say, this is like when I'm going to launch it. And, um, pick out the days and stuff. And then other times I just move with my intuitive feeling. And oftentimes I will be, you know, laying next to one of my kids when they're going to sleep and I'll put some Instagram stories together. And before putting that out, I will again, like kind of tune in and say like, what does the person who needs this need to hear right now? And I'll write from there. I have also done a lot of many courses. Um, I read, I've read a lot of books around, you know, psychology and sales. So there is some strategy to it. So when you think about marketing as human relationship, you can think about it as how do you want to be held in conversation? If you just meet somebody for the first time and they are just telling you all about themselves and they never stop to ask you any questions. Um, they might be lovely. You might walk away and say that, you know, that was a lovely person, but most likely you're not going to say, you know, I want to spend time with them again because you probably didn't feel seen in that conversation. You didn't feel seen in that exchange. So just take that into consideration when you are marketing or selling something. The person on the other side, they want to feel seen. They want to know that you understand where they are. So let's just use an example of if you are selling, if you are a holistic um, fitness professional and you are selling something for postpartum women, what I see a lot of people do is they'll they'll just throw out the program. They'll say, okay, this is for you. Are you postpartum? I have a six week program. It includes a meal plan, a this, a this, and a this. And some people will say, oh, that's great. Okay. I think I need something like that, but you're going to have to, you're going to have to really post about it a lot. You're going to have to really educate them on why, why you're the person along the way, because They are not, they don't have that instant magnetism of like, oh, she's the one that I need to learn this from, right? Because there's many different programs that you can buy. So if you want to do this more intuitive, magnetic way of marketing, a way to to sell a program to, you know, a postpartum woman who is really wants to feel seen, you're, you know, what you're saying or your copy is going to be about them. Are you feeling so overwhelmed at the thought of trying to get back to your exercise routine is balancing a baby on your hip and trying to meal plan your lunches, totally leaving you feel like feeling like you have no energy left at the end of the day. Do you just want some time to yourself to move your body and feel more connected to your you know, physical body. So, (laughs) um, using that kind of language is going to help them say, yeah, that's me. Like I feel that stress of taking out all the vegetables and taking out the deli meat and trying to make a sandwich while I'm also breastfeeding my little one. Like she gets it. She understands where, where I'm coming from. It, it, it has that other person has that customer feeling really seen and held like you understand them. So that's where if you continue to market and sell in that way, in that human focus, human relation way, 
your sales are going to get a lot easier because people are, you're building a relationship with them. You're not just saying, I'm the authority. I know what to do. Come to me and I will fix you. No, you are saying here, you know what? I developed this really robust program. It's really going to help you. And the reason why it's going to help you is because I've been there too, or I, I really have spent time getting to know people in, in your time in life. And I think that what I have is really going to support you during this time. So that is, that's more of that, you know, mixing the the strategy with the intuition and it's so, so possible. And here's the thing. It feels so good. It feels like you are truly serving your people. You're not convincing them. You're giving them their power to make their decision. And it's so possible. It's so possible to build a business that way. And we see it happening more and more. There is such a call. There's such a desire for authenticity. Um, people want to get to know, especially in the age of social media, like we are our businesses. We, you know, we are the face of our businesses, many of us. And people want to see that you are embodied in the work. So this would continue to be a conversation here on the podcast because this is something that means so, so much to me. And I just want to teach more and more um, how to do it because it is possible to have these really intuitive marketing strategies. It's, it's really possible to blend both because there is a, I've always had a desire for some strategy. We need that grounding, right? We need to feel like, and we also need to, to have the space to like have strategy so that we can allow other people to help us. If you have a team, like if you have to be able to balance that because people can't read your mind all the time. And if you have a team come in and you're always just working on the fly with your intuition, um, that can be hard to like work with other people. So there's ways to blend it all. And I just can't wait to dive more deeply into that over our time together. And if you have any questions, again, like reach out to me on Instagram or send me a um, email and we can do more of this on the podcast. And like I said, my intuitive business method is coming and I, it's going to be super supportive. It's going to be um, a program that you buy one time and then you have access to for life. And it's going to include a group coaching component. And it's going to be a really accessible price point because we need more community around this way of marketing and selling. And um, because there's so many people in the world who have something to share, but they've been so burnt by the sales process and the sales process that we like know typically has made them feel like so uncomfortable that they don't sell their things and we have to change that. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I am again, so thankful that you are here and that you are listening. And if this, you know, resonated with you, please let me know how you felt about it. And if you feel inclined, leave a five-star written review. I would appreciate it so much and share it with me because I really, really want to thank you. Um, again, this is all about us creating more and more human connection. We need it. I love you all. And I will talk to you soon. Before you go, do me a favor and leave a five-star rating and written review. The more we connect, the more the world is connected. As I love to say to all of my groups, my clients, Rising tides lift all boats. See you next week.